G'day, g'day, g'day. This is Charlie and I'm coming to you today from my locals community with your daily dose of business inspiration. Come on over and join me at askcharlielethan.locals.com. You can join the community for free and see the content that goes up, most of the content that goes up. You can become a supporter for $2 US per month. That allows you to interact with the content. It allows you to leave comments. It allows you to create your own conversations within the community as well. It also will give you access to supporter-only content when that goes up as well. Apart from that, it also helps me to keep creating content like this, like my podcasts, like my tutorials. But let's get on and have a chat today about the art of decision making in business. It's such a pretentious title, isn't it? And again, I'm a little bit more casual today. Just wanted to sort of break it up a little. Anyway, let's have a chat about the art of decision making in business. Now, look, I've got a whole heap of notes here and I'm not going to fit them all into a six to seven or even 12 minute video which I've noticed I've been doing recently love to know your thoughts though do you like the short form videos do you like the slightly longer ones which ones are you resonating better with leave me a thumbs up or thumbs down on some of them that would be great no no thumbs down that would be good but let's talk about uh, the art of decision making in business I'm not going to go through all of these points But I'm going to broad brush it. And if there's anything here that really resonates with you that you want to dig down more deeply into, let's have a chat. If there's something here that uh, you think you could add to the conversation, you want to come on to my full form podcast, I'd love to hear from you as well. There's a couple of things about the art of decision making in business or decision making in business. And the first thing is, is that you've got to be prepared to make a decision. Uh, and if you don't make a decision, you are still making a decision. Now, that was something that it took me a very long time to actually get my head around is that not making a decision is still making a decision. You are choosing not to choose, basically, and you are choosing to let whatever happens, happens. So you have to be prepared to make decisions if you're going to be in business. If you if you are the type of person who procrastinates, Get some assistance, get some coaching, uh, read some uh, business books, read some uh, professional and personal development books about how to make decisions, how to be decisive, how to be incisive about what you do. One of the the first things you absolutely need to do, one of the first two things you absolutely need to do when you're making um, decisions and trying to work out where it is you want to take your business or what it is you want to do within your business, you need to define the problem. Now, you'll notice that in a lot of my videos, I talk about, well, we don't talk about problems, we talk about challenges, we talk about opportunities, we talk about growth opportunities. But what it comes down to, and um, I've actually said this as well, and we're talking about uh, you know how how we get out to our target audience is we need to know what it is we're trying to fix or solve or do, and it's a problem for us because there's something that we need to be able to do, and we need to know how to do it. So you need to be able to clearly define that problem. If you can't clearly define that problem, uh, then go back to the 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 drawing boards and and get it down even if you just start dot pointing it in fact you know this video is probably going to be a whole heap more just on these first couple of points and if we get further on with other videos that's great as well I'm I'm going to give you an example of something I saw today um, and it's just started and it's just a conversation that started somewhere on the internet and someone said look I've got a problem my uh, client doesn't want to give me lists of work. They are an assistant that they're supposed to be helping this this client do things. They don't know the client business. Uh, They're not a shareholder in the business. They're not a stakeholder in the business. They are a contractor to the business and the business is meant to be giving them work. And she said, but they they won't give me lists of work. She just wants to fly by the seat of the pants. So of course, what, what do I do? How would you manage this? And of course, there's been a lot of advice going back and forwards. And, you know, one person said, well, you know, get, get her to record what she wants you to do, like voice record or do a video of it or do a screen capture. And I came back to, well, hang on a minute. What is this problem that we try, that you're trying to solve here? Is it that she won't or your client won't give you a list of things to do? Is it that she can't do it because she doesn't know what she wants you to do, which is a bigger problem? Because if she doesn't know what she needs her assistance to do to be able to help her be successful, 
it's not going to go very well. Maybe she doesn't need an assistant to check her emails or make phone calls or uh, you know check check that sales have gone out, um, product or services have gone out. Maybe she needs someone who can just help her sit down on a daily basis and say, okay, tell me what's what's on your mind. Where are we at? Okay, this is where we're at. Maybe she needs an EA. Maybe she needs someone that's slightly more higher level to get some strategies and some frameworks in place before they actually go to getting someone who can execute on those strategies and frameworks because at the moment there's nothing. So she's got to go back and ask more questions and she's got to ask herself more questions about what she's being asked to do and whether for, for this person who was asking the question, whether this is the type of business she wants to do, whether this is the type of work she wants to do. So clearly define the problem that, that, that you're trying to solve. Clearly define what it is you're trying to achieve. Once you've got, you think you've got that, and I'm going to say you will have it 80%. I like the Pareto principle, 80% of the time, 20% of the effort, blah, 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 80-20 rule. You're going to be able to define this this problem pretty much down eighty percent. I'm never going to. I'm not. I'm not going to say that you're going to make it to a hundred because as you go along, you're probably going to refine what it is you're trying to do as you get more information. And that's the second part of the process, and that's to define or gather information, collect ta- data, facts, insights to inform your process to to get get as much information as you can about. What's current best practice? What are other people doing? What are the tools out there? Are there tools out there? Can we use these tools? Uh, what what's the market research telling me? What what a market what's the market trending towards? Is this a fad fad thing? Is this just going to be a fly um a fly by night thing? A, a go a here and gone type thing? Is this something I want to actually be doing in my business? Is the first two things. <laughs> I know this video is going to go a little longer. Then you need to look at your alternatives. Are there alternatives to what you can be doing? Is there another way to do what you want to do that isn't going to take you as much effort, as much money? Uh, is it going to be more? Is it going to give you longevity in the business? Are there other? Are there uh, trade offs? What, what are the trade offs? What are the pros and cons of doing this? What? how if I do this, it's going to give me these benefits, but it's going to give me these drawbacks. Once you get to that point, you can then get down to, okay, I've got all of this information. Now I need to go and test it, test it against the market, get other people's input into it, uh, have a look at what what reviews are saying. Honestly, I yep. I, I, I know I spoke with Callum Armstrong a couple of weeks ago about you should have reviews on your site and you should get people reviewing your products and services. And you're like, oh, whoever reads reviews. Um, I find I do now. <laughs> I go out and I go out, even looking for a camping ground or somewhere where I want to stay now. I'll go and read the reviews and see what they have to say about it. It's become endemic in the way we do in it, in the way we do things. We always took that feedback, but it's even more so now. So go and read reviews, go and look on the review sites and see what people are saying about those products and services. Get people you trust, not necessarily family or friends, but get people you trust to have a look at it and and bounce ideas off of you and challenge you on it and push back against your thinking so that they know or so that you get another viewpoint on it. I'm going to say you need to trust your instincts when it all comes down to it and you've got all your information together and it's posted and it's put into a nice little package and you're looking at it and you you can see logically on a piece of paper this solution looks better than this but there's something that you've gone through this process and something is saying to you deep down maybe it's in your gut that other solution is probably better for me trust your instincts absolutely challenge yourself and say is this an emotional decision is it a rational decision is it a reasonable decision okay come back to reasonable and rational um rational i was listening to a book recently that May brought those into focus for me, and then trust your instincts on what you what you decide, and then commit. Make the decision and stick with it. Now, you could make a mistake. It could be the wrong decision. It probably won't be fatal. 
it likely won't be fatal. It's going to be something else that you can take on board and say, that was another learning experience. So that's how, at a really high level, I approach my own decision-making processes. There's a few more steps in there. There's a few more nuances that you might want to go into. But that's how I approach making a decision at a very high level and a very, very quick overview of what I do. What do you guys do? What have you found works for you? What have you found doesn't work for you? What have you got examples of something that worked really, really well and something that really worked, or something that worked terribly and you'd never ever do that again? You'd never go that way again. Not not the decision you made, but the process that you went through. Come across to locals, ask charlieleatham.locals.com. Leave some comments over there, join in this conversation and let's get some dialogue going and some conversation happening and advice out to people about how, how you can run your businesses and make these decisions. Or leave some comments below. Leave a review if you can. That would be really helpful. That helps the content go further. Remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, ring the notification bell so that you get notified when there's more content available maybe share this content with someone who you think needs to hear it today and apart from that guys i will see you all tomorrow bye